Hello and welcome once again to Beatle University. I'm Professor Moptop, and as we continue to learn about each and every Beatle song, we again head back to the Magical Mystery Tour film and soundtrack, where we have an unusual song to discuss, unusual even by Beatle standards. Several points that we have made in the past. The Beatles wanted to make music that sounded weird. John Lennon was never very good at putting into words what he was hearing in his head. In 1967, the Beatles were taking inspiration from anything that they could get to write songs, and they were really enjoying their LSD during this period of time. Also, Beatle history is spotty, and much of it depends on who you believe in, when they said it, and the Beatles liked random things. All of these elements are the ingredients for I Am The Walrus. I am he as you are, he as you are, me and we are all together. See how they run like pigs from a gun, see how they fly. I'm crying. For this, John Lennon got inspiration from a police siren. Gradually, it evolved into one of the most complicated and unique Beatles songs of all. Apparently, Lennon heard the sound of a police siren in the distance, and he started humming the tune and singing some words about Mr. City Policeman sitting pretty. He wrote that down, along with the I am me and you are he bit, and then he added some thoughts about waiting for the man to come, as well as English Gardens and the sun. John put the song away for a bit, returning to it when he randomly reached into a bag of Beatle fan mail and picked one out from the Quarry Bank School, where he had attended. Quarry student Stephen Bailey wrote to John explaining that they were currently analyzing his lyrics in literature class. Lennon laughed at the thought of the school that declared him to be a destined failure was now examining his work as poetry. He also wrote a letter back to Bailey, which was very unusual for John. From thinking about his younger days, he recalled a song that they would sing on the playground that went yellow matter custard, green slop pie, all mixed together in a dead dog's eye, slap it on a buddy, ten foot thick, then wash it all down with a cold cup of sick. A buddy is an English word for a sandwich. Since everybody was now paying very close attention to what John was saying, he decided to give them something to really think about without actually making any sense, a tool he suspected Bob Dylan had already been getting away with. While remembering his past and trying to not make sense, he thought of semolina, which was a disgusting porridge type of pudding, and pilchard, which is a canned fish that John called cat food. There's also British police officer Norman Pilcher, who busted members of the Rolling Stones and took direct aim at the young drug culture of England. It's not certain where the Eggman came from or who he is, however Eric Burden from the Animals claims to have been called the Eggman or Eggs in Lennon's presence before. Lennon was also trying to include some proper nouns, so climbing up the Eiffel Tower, it became. There's also Harry Krishna and of course Edgar Allan Poe. Semolina Pilchard Climbing up the Eiffel Tower Elementary penguins singing Hare Krishna Man, you should have seen them kicking Edgar Allan Poe The walrus comes from The Walrus and the Carpenter from Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass and Lucy in the Sky comes from the Beatles' very own Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Seeing how they fly is possibly there to make people think again about the LSD interpretation of the song. There's also a couple of made-up words, like Crabalocker and Texpert. John was in a very creative place. And also, inside this unusual song was a bit of Smokey Robinson, an all-time favorite of Lennon's. See how they smile like pigs in a sty, see how this night I'm crying. John sings, I'm crying, which was a direct nod to Smokey in his 1965 hit, Ooh, Baby, Baby. Also included are Goo Goo Gajubes. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. I am the Walrus. Goo Goo Gajub, Goo Goo Gajub. And an elementary penguin is somehow Allen Ginsberg, a very unusual collection of words, which, as Lennon says, was just saying a dream out loud. Words don't mean a lot, it's not that serious. As John completed his most unusual set of lyrics, he needed to figure out just how he was going to record them. He presented it in the studio to George Martin and the other Beatles, and Martin wasn't too excited about the song at first. 
He thought it had limited potential and was just too far out there, but he was never one to give up on the Beatles. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. I am the Walrus. On August 27th of 1967, the Beatles suffered a major loss when their manager, Brian Epstein, suddenly passed away. They cut their scheduled 10-day visit with the Maharishi short and postponed their planned trip to India to come home and attend to business matters. Due to the fact that their presence alone would draw a huge crowd, the Beatles did not attend the funeral for Epstein, which took place on the 29th of August. On the 1st of September, just as the summer of love was beginning to wind down, the four Beatles met at Paul's home to discuss their future and specifics about the upcoming film project, which would go on as planned, regardless of their tragic loss. Four days later, on the 4th, the band met at EMI Studios to work on I Am The Walrus, their first session since the sad loss of their manager. John Lennon had started the evening off by playing his latest for his bandmates and George Martin, who was not especially impressed at first. Martin may have thought that they at last had gone too far. In spite of their producer's apprehension and the fact that everybody involved was preoccupied and distracted over the loss of their business partner and friend, they carried on, determined to accomplish something. They rehearsed for a while with John playing the Wurlitzer electric piano, possibly the Honer pianette. George played the electric rhythm guitar, probably his psychedelic Stratocaster, and Ringo played the drums. Paul played bass on the first few takes, but Ringo was having some uncommon trouble keeping the beat, so McCartney, who had always kept impeccable time, shook the tambourine while standing in front of Ringo's drum kit to lend a bit of support. After 16 takes and an alleged Mellotron overdub, the rhythm track was all done and the band called it a night, pleased with themselves that they were able to make progress in spite of their tragic loss. The following day, the 6th of September, Paul overdubbed his bass and Ringo overdubbed more drums. After that, Lennon recorded his incredible lead vocal with a bit of distortion added to his voice and it was sung into a low-grade microphone to achieve the sound that John had requested from the EMI staff, which was to record his voice to sound like it was coming from the moon. Remember, Lennon was very bad at describing into words what he was hearing in his head. Although there was no on-the-moon switch for engineer Jeff Emmerich to select, the sound he created was good enough for Lennon, who was also impatient and very hard to please. Yellow metal custard Dripping from a dead dog's eye Grab a locker, fishwife, pornographic priestess Boy, you've been a naughty girl, you let your knickers down At the time, Lennon wasn't exactly thrilled, but he ultimately loved the results, requesting distortion on everything after that. Another idea discussed this evening was the avant-garde and random suggestion to include a radio broadcast, which was deemed at the time by George Martin to be too difficult to execute. After work on the Walrus was done for the night, they started on Harrison's Blue Jay Way, and then Paul taped his demo for Full on the Hill. After discussing what to do next with I Am the Walrus, George Martin came up with an orchestral score for 16 outside musicians. It called for eight violins, three horns, four cellos, and a contrabass clarinet. That's the big tall one. One of the violin chairs was filled by familiar face Sidney Sachs, now appearing on his fifth Beatles song. That's Yesterday, Eleanor Rigby, A Day in the Life, All You Need Is Love, and now I Am the Walrus. There were a few other session guys around who had now played on two or three other different Beatles songs. These musicians recorded during an afternoon session on the 27th of September. It's not sure if the Beatles were even present for this, but they were there for the evening when some outside vocalists were brought in to record. The Mike Sam Singers were a British vocal group who John Lennon was extremely unfamiliar with, but George Martin knew about. Somewhere, my love, there will be songs to sing. The eight men and eight women were directed by Martin and Lennon, who worked extremely well together on this occasion. I am the Eggman. They are the Eggman. I am the Walrus. The singers recorded woos and oompa oompas, stick em up your jumpers, and the ho 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 he he he's. <laughs> Lennon also had the singers sing got one, got one, everybody's got one. Oh, 
Careful listening reveals that the singers also snort when John sings about pigs smiling. See how they smile like pigs in a sty. See how this night. I'm crying. Finally, on the 29th, after some editing was done on the song, they finally incorporated John's idea to add some random radio noise. <laughs> With Ringo fiddling the knobs, they recorded the sound of a random radio noise directly onto the master tape. Bury my body, and give the letters which thou findst about me to Edmund Earl of Gloucester. The sound that was being broadcast was Shakespeare's The Tragedy of King Lear, Act 4, Scene 6. Seek him out upon the British party. They just happened to get there during the death scene of the play. Oh, untimely death. Death. The actors speaking are Mark Dignam, Philip Gard, and John Brining. It's not sure if these actors ever knew that they made it onto the fade of a Beatles song. I know thee well, a serviceable villain, as duteous to the vices of thy mistress as bad as would desire. What? Is he dead? Sit you down, father. Rest you. After more remixing, the song was finally all done, and John Lennon, as well as the previously skeptical George Martin, were both very excited and satisfied with the results of what they called organized chaos. It stands out as a highlight of the film and the soundtrack, and it's quite possibly the weirdest the Beatles ever got, and that is certainly saying something. And with that, we say so long for another week here at Beatle U. Join me next time around when we talk about a McCartney song which was released as a single, but it's also kinda sort of from the Mystery Tour film. Until then, class dismissed! I am Professor Mop Top. One, two, three, four. A Mop Top Production. Very good.